Hello guys, today we're going to be doing an explanation of the different types of operations you can do with pivot tables and more specifically we're going to be taking an in-depth look at this new operation that's called distant count, alright? Now if you're here just for the distant count feel free to skip over to the second half of the video because in the first half we'll be talking about uh, basic operations, alright? So without further ado, let's get started. Well, just one more note guys, this is not a video for absolute beginners, alright? If you're here trying to figure out how to create a pivot table from scratch, I'm going to sort of gloss over that. Uh, I have other videos on how to do pivot tables. This one is on how to uh, understand different operations in pivot tables, alright guys? So let's get started. Right now we're working with this restaurant table right here, and uh, we're going to be doing several different operations, basically the ones that are being asked right here. Now guys, this table is already set up as, a, as an Excel table and it's called restaurant. So we can go ahead and create an pivot table right here. I'm going to select an empty space to create the pivot table. I'm going to click insert and insert my new pivot table. And it's going to come over, you guessed it, from the restaurant table. All right, so here we are. We have our new pivot table, it's called restaurant. And it's asking me in first glance to calculate the sales by waiter. Now, this is the simplest uh, example I can give you. I'm going to grab waiter and drag it down here to roast. It's going to give me a list of waiters. And then I'm going to grab, uh, well, that's something that I need to figure out by myself. This is the first problem I have with my students, that I, they struggle a lot with this. And that is that I need to grab, say, for example, order number one and uh, figure out how much money came into a restaurant for order number one. Now, just assume these are dollar amounts, they're not, they're actually in Mexican pesos, but just assume they're dollar amounts. Um, if I want to figure out how much money actually came into a restaurant just for order number one, I'd add up the price for every single item that was ordered. And you can check it out right here. Well, if you can just squint and, and force your eyes to look at this, you can figure out right here that it's $222 that came into a restaurant because it's the sum of all of the prices that were charged to the customer, all right? So that's pretty much how um, additions work in pivot tables. If I'm being asked for the total sales by waiter, then I just add everything up by waiter, all right? Say, for example, this is everything for Alejandro. I should be told that Alejandro sold $244,000 throughout the entire year. All right, let's check out if that is true. I'm going to grab price. I'm going to drag it down here to values and as, uh, Pretty much it's telling me as a default that it's going to be adding that those up. So the sum of all of the prices are going to tell me that Alejandro sold this much and Ernesto sold this much and Ahol sold this much and so on and so on and so on. All right, guys? So it's pretty much how the most basic of functions of uh, operations within pivot tables works. That is the sum. All right. Now, next up, I am going to calculate the total orders by waiter. And notice here that I'm telling you no can do. All right, I'm going to try to and I'm going to show you why it's impossible. And then in the second half of the video, I'm going to show you how with this thing count, we can actually do it much, much simpler. All right, so let's do it. Um, notice how the data is turned out here. I have the, the orders and I can figure out right here that I have 2,500 different orders in total, all right? But notice that all of these lines correspond to order number one. Keep that in mind. All right, so I'm going to insert a new pivot table. It's going to come from restaurant again. Ah, restaurant. All right, guys. And once I'm here in the new pivot table, I am going to grab waiter. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Total order by waiter. Yeah. And I'm going to grab order and order number and drag it down here to values. Now, this is supposed to be a count. So I'm going to convert it to number format. Guys, when I teach this course, I get a ton. Uh, I, well, I get into a ton of trouble. Uh, making my students understand this. I hope you're not, you're not so slow on the uptake. All right, guys. What is the problem here? This is telling me that we have Alejandro served four million two hundred thousand orders throughout the entire year. Uh, common sense would tell us that not only is this impossible from a physical standpoint, we don't have enough orders there for Alejandro to have served. He only has a maximum of 2,500. Now, a lot of my students, they, they just gloss over that. I mean, they assume that because the pivot table is telling them that, it's correct. No, that's not the point. All right, some of my students can actually reason a little bit beyond that. And they go over here to sum of order, and then they click right here, go over to value field settings, and change the operation to count, all right? So right here. Now we have count and we have something that's a little bit more reasonable. Alejandro delivered 3,430 orders. 
But again, that is not true because this is actually not counting uh, how many orders there were, but rather how many dishes, how many drinks Alejandro served. So this is actually why, because this is counting how many lines are there to Alejandro's name. If I were to filter this out in the table and uh, check out how many lines Alejandro has in the table, I'd get 3,430, all right, guys? Which is pretty much what I'm being told right here. And again, common sense would tell us Alejandro can't have served 3,430 orders because the grand total we have right here is 2,500. Again, guys, um, a lot of my students have trouble grasping this, so that's why I'm taking the time to create this video for you guys. You need to understand this. You need to know your data set and understand that the pivot table might not, have, uh, might not have given you an error message, but that doesn't mean it's right. You have to reason the data that's being thrown at you. All right, guys, so we're going to leave this as a pending item. We're going to later figure out how many different orders each, each server served, right? Now, next up, average price per order. That's going to be really simple. I'm going to insert a new pivot table here. It's coming from restaurant. And I'm going to grab order number, drag it down here to rows. And then I'm going to grab um, price and drag it down here to values. All right, right here it's telling me the sum of price. But when I change it, when I change it to average, then it's going to tell me then it's going to tell me what the average of the of each item ordered in, within each order was, right? So for number one, they ordered a bunch of small ticket items. Uh, each one averaged about $37, right guys? But if I were to say, for example, sort them from largest to smallest, then I get that order 266, the average price of each item was $407, right? There are a bunch of, of very high-end steaks and uh, wines and other pricey stuff. So from a continuous improvement process, if you were the manager of, the rest of this restaurant, you'd be taking notes, say for example, of um, who, whomever was the one that was asking these kinds of orders, so that you can bring them back in. I mean, I don't know, send them gift cards or invitations, special events, whatever. Make sure that they keep coming back to your restaurant because these are high ticket rollers. All right, guys. Now, another thing that we can calculate, maximum price per order. So again, grab price and drag it down here to values. A lot of people don't know that you can grab the same field and put it twice within the values uh, box, all right? Now, this is something that you have to know to do. You can grab the same field and put it right here twice or thrice or as many times as you need in the values box. Now, I'm going to click here sum of price. I'm going to click value field settings and I am going to go over to max, all right? Now, max is simply going to calculate what is the largest price or, or the price of the largest item of the highest ticket item within that particular order, all right? You'll notice some of these are 758. Those have to be bottles of wine, all right? Now, I'm going to sort them from largest to smallest. And yeah, we have a bunch here of the same bottle, of the same pricey bottle of wine that was ordered by all of these tables, all right, guys? So the standard deviation by order, the standard deviation by order, the last one, is going to be really simple. Now, this is going to tell me, again, price goes down here. Yo, oh. and I'm going to convert it to standard deviation. Now, this isn't a statistics class. I already have a video on, on the basic statistics, but standard deviation is pretty much um, how much uh, price in this instance is going to deviate from the mean, from the average, all right? So standard deviation of price right here tells me that price deviates by 275 from the average. Now, if you're not an industrial engineer, you don't need to know standard deviation in your life at all, all right? Uh, but if you do quality controls and stuff, Make sure that you actually know how to calculate standard deviation here in Excel. All right, guys. So that's it for the basic operations. There's a bunch more, but I'm not going to I'm not going to delve into those because they're rarely ever used. These are pretty much the, the main ones. And by main ones, I mean sum, count, and average. Max and standard deviation. I know a bunch of specialized people that they swear by those, but the rest of you probably never going to touch them ever. All right. Now, guys. Uh, what you came here for, distinct count. Distinct count is going to be, um, it's, it's a new function that is available in, X, in Excel so long as you have Power Pivot. All right, if you don't have Power Pivot installed then you don't have access to distinct count. And I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Um, Office, 
Office versions that has that have Power Pivot available, well, there are any Pro version that comes after 2010. Preferably stuff that comes after 2013. We're in 2019, people, so you usually have Excel 2013, 2016, or 2019 available to you with Power Pivot. So, how would I get this thing kind of going? If I try to do this thing count here, I'm being asked to, for example, calculate how many different products are sold in the restaurant. Well, I try inserting a pivot table for my normal range, restaurant. And then uh, how many different products are sold in the restaurant? So I'm going to product down here to values, then click here to modify the uh, operation and this thing count should be all the way up to bottom, but it's not there, all right? Why? Because of the way I inserted my pivot table. Since my pivot table came from my normal way of inserting it from restaurant, then that's not going to work. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to show you how to insert the pivot table correctly. I'm going to grab my table here. I'm going to go over to Power Pivot, and I'm going to tell it to add it to a data model. All right, so right now it's adding the table to a data model. And you don't need to know anything about Power Pivot to make this thing count work, all right? The only thing that you need to know is that it's active and that the table has been added to a data model. The way it comes is the way it goes. So as soon as this window opens, I can just close it up again. No need to save anything and go back to my distant count tab. All right, guys, I'm going to go over to insert pivot table and I'm going to tell it to use this workbooks data model. All right, that's how I'm going to insert the table right here. I'm going to press OK. And notice how it's a little bit different. I have this little twister here for the restaurant table, which I can expand. Then I can grab um, category. No, I'm sorry, product, that's what I wanted, and drag it down here. Everything looks the same so far, but when I press here and go over to value field settings, all the way up to the bottom, now I have the distant count formula. All right, I'm going to press OK, and this is going to tell me that there were 68 different products sold within the restaurant. All right, guys? So, that sounds reasonable. Now, calculate how many different drinks are sold by month. This is one of the most interesting parts about distant count. You can make it work like any other pivot table formula. So again, I'm going to insert a new pivot table. It's going to come from the data model. I'm going to press OK here. I'm going to go over to my restaurant twisty and I'm going being asked how many different drinks are sold by month. I don't have a month uh, field, but I do have a date field. So that's what I'm going to drag down here to rows. And notice how it's all pre-grouped for me. All right, it's all pre-grouped for me. I'm going to remove quarter, I'm going to remove dates. So here we go. Just years and months available to me. All right, guys, how many different drinks? So I'm going to drag product down here to values and I am going to drag um, type down here to filters. I'm going to use the type to filter the drinks. I just need drinks. And for the values, I'm going to ask it instead of count of product, it's going to be, you guessed it, the distant count of products. All right, so this is going to tell me how many different drinks there are in the restaurant. Uh, we're sold in the restaurant. Starting in February, we were selling the whole range of drinks that we, that we handled, 25. But then something happened in September that we stopped selling and uh, stuff started going down. All right, by the time January, January rolls around, we're only selling 21 different kinds of drinks. Now, guys, in the online course, we do a deep dive into this data set. There's a story behind that. Um, I won't spoil it for you totally, but there was a good reason that wine stopped selling throughout the restaurant. All right. Now, uh, I won't bother you with the details, but pretty much distant count is telling me that we stopped selling um, that we started losing vari variety of drinks. And this is something that's awesome about Power Pivot because you couldn't do this type of analysis before with Excel. You sort of could, but you had to do, go through several steps that were tedious and long and, uh, that, well, just made your work harder. All right, guys. Now, last two. Calculate how many different categories are sold by table. Well, it's going to be simple. Just grab table number, somewhere over there, table right here, and just grab categories down here to values and change the operation, all right? This is going to show me that all tables sold all of 10 categories. There was no single table where you said salads are never sold here or another table where steaks are never sold here or another table that never bought desserts, all right? Throughout the year, all 17 tables sold all 10 different categories of goods. And finally, again, how many different products are sold by client type? This is pretty much a practice, uh, a practice exercise because it's so simple. I'm going to need client type, uh, customer type right here, new customer and repeat customer, and I'm going to look for products. Grab product, drag it down here to values, and oh, change the operation type to 
distant count, all right? So there we go, 68 different products, both for new and repeat customers. No surprise there, they both bought the full gamut of our, of our offering in the menu. All right, guys? Now, we left one last thing pending. Back here in basic operations, we never could get this to work, all right? And we won't be able to get it to work right now because this pivot table, if you remember, came directly from the data. We need to, in order to get, the, to get it to work, we need to, the pivot table to come from the data model. So I need to go to circle back and insert a new pivot table that's coming from the data model. And then if you remember, we wanted the total orders by waiter. So I just grab waiter, drag it down here to rows, and I grab order number, drag it down here to values, and then change the field settings all the way down here to distant count. All right, guys, and there we go. We have some numbers that actually make sense. Alejandro delivered 277 orders, Omar delivered 304, and most importantly, the grand total of all of these different orders is 2,500, all right? 2,500 different orders were sold by these waiters. So, guys, that's pretty much it, all right? Now we have the data that we needed, and uh, you, you now realize the power of distant count. Distant count is one of the most useful, if not the most useful new formulas in, in Power Pivot. And it's so useful, Microsoft decided to include it in the basic Excel. As you can see right now, we never touched Power Pivot to do distant count. Guys, if you're dealing with similar uh, data sets where you have, I mean, you have invoices broken down by line item or or payroll payments, again, broken down by line item and stuff like that, and you have to figure out how many different invoices there are, then uh, distant count is a very, very, very useful tool for you to have in your in your toolbox, all right? Guys, distant, distant count is just the first of many tools that are available for you in Power Pivot, and that, that's something we delve deeper into, into the online course. But right now, well, you, you already know how to use this. Guys, if you liked the video, make sure that you like, subscribe, comment, tell your friends, your mom, everyone about it, all right? Thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video.